I started making things when I was very, very small. That's what I remember most from childhood, of just constantly making things. Constantly being interested in looking at things. I grew up in the art museums and the galleries very early. I would just go to shows or go to the Metropolitan Museum or go to the Guggenheim. So I grew up with art, looking at art. In 1976, was hired by George Washington University as a professor of fine arts. In 2003, I said, okay, <laughs> that's enough of the teaching. So I, I retired, and I've just been doing art since then. Behind the work is always a spiritual impulse. We're here a short time, there's a lot of matter in the universe. It never is lost, it changes all the time. And I'm very interested in what goes on in the space between things that we can't see, and that has always been my interest. This kind of transcendental attitude about the nature of reality. I came to do black and white because when I used color, it was too referential to a given time, place, instant. Without using the color, I was then able to create these kind of luminous black and white images. Sometimes people think it's a photograph of a real place, but none of my work is the real place. It's always interpreted influenced by real places, but never real. It's wonderful when people come by and make appointments, come and see the studio and see the work, because I'm really interested in what they see. You know, what does it mean to them? That's exciting, because it means that I'm carrying on a conversation, which is all that the work is about, making the unseen visible. I think people who like my work want to see it and have it because it's very meditative. It creates an area of calm and peace. I never quite see what I want to see. Rauschenberg said when he made things it was because he wanted to see them. And I think that's right. I want to see this. And the only way I can see it is I have to make it. Mm -hmm.